wife. Uh, uh, shout out if you're here from uh, Camp Improv Utopia. Yeah. 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 Right on. Very cool. Well, we're going to do some improv for you. In order to get started, can we please get a word or a phrase to inspire us? Thunder. Thunder. Thank Thunder. you. Um, there is a convention. Uh, it was the second year this year. It's called PowerCon ThunderCon. That's right. It's for fans of He-Man and Thundercats. <laughs> and I've been both years. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing, because you walk in and you're immediately like eight years old again. So you see all the old toys that you used to have, and you just like, I'm like a kid in a candy store. And then this year, I'm like getting excited as I talk about it. <laughs> and then this year, they had uh, the cast, everyone except Dolph Lundgren, from no. the He-Man movie in the 80s. And the woman who played, you know, they're all character actors who haven't really done anything since. And David, and I just saw her a few weeks ago. Yes, we did. Who played yes, Evil did. Lynn? No. no. Uh, who, who, nice played, who played the, the good, the good, the oh, okay. good, the good, who played Tila? Tila. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, Also, <laughs> also uh, fun fact, Courtney Cox's first movie. He-Man. Yep, He-Man. Uh, that reminds we saw her at the Yamashiro Farmer's Market, uh, which is on Thursday nights. Uh, I don't work for them, but it's a lovely time. Uh, but it's great, and, and that's the thing about it, is like, because of where we are, you walk up there, and it's kind of like walking into a wax museum. So I've heard, I've seen Jeff Goldblum, like, who is a towering man, like, bring this date, and then, like, his handlers were behind him, and he he brought her up and was like, look, 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 look. Look, look, look at everything in front of you. <laughs> and, and like she looked out there, and then he would like twirled her around in such a presentational fashion and laid like a deep swooning kiss what on a her. Terrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was so ostentatious. Farmers and markets are like this weird social scene, like like, yeah. like the, the, the Sunday Hollywood one. You need your fucking a game. You no. <laughs> need to like have an attitude. The yeah, like I, the fanciest people I ever run into are. On Selma Avenue, which we all know smells like piss. Yes, <laughs> but, but on Sunday mornings we, you know, high, uh, high times are had. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the last time I was at a um, farmer's market, it was the one in Toluca Lake, and uh, so I'm there. Uh, my girlfriend were surveying the produce and such, uh, and I had to go uh, use the bathroom. So at the time, Kukuru is a now defunct chicken restaurant, but there was one. Why did I miss that? That's yeah, defunct in my neighborhood. <laughs> so anyway, I had, to, I, had to, I had to go in there and use the bathroom, so I'm like, oh, I'll be right back. So I walk in, and um, it's a like, fast food place, so I open up the door to the bathroom, I don't knock, and I, this is all I see. This is a guy, one kid just like, like out of Mr. Mom, like fucking just going nuts. <laughs> and he's trying to like wipe his other baby, and he's fucking just crying. He's a mess. He's got like the, the Santa wipe thing around his arm, and he's holding one baby. He's like, just help me out! And he turns to look at me, and he does one of these, and when he turns to look, it's Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pirates. Yeah! <laughs> I'm like, hey! <laughs> I, this is a, a pure fact. Seven days later, he uh, had a divorce from his wife. She lit his shit on fire in their house in Toluca Lake. Like, I blame that spot! <laughs> Picked up a big bag of smack. You walked in on him in rock bottom. Yeah, I caught a guy named Ross uh, taking a crap at the uh, when, I, when I, was in, I was in Boy Scout. No, I was in Boy Scout leadership training camp and when I was like thirteen or fourteen. It was called Camp Oakleaf uh, in the uh, in the Karankawa, uh forest of, uh, of Texas. And uh, I remember we're like going around, and I was terrified by the raccoons that killed each other in front of me uh, every night. Like I couldn't sleep, and they're like I would wake up and shine my flashlight, and it would just be like bloodthirsty raccoons, and then he's like slitting the throats, each other. fighting each other. Oh, yeah, geez. and because I couldn't get to our food, and I guess I they went to my each grandparents' other. house the other day, and there was like the most funky smell, like something had died. And I go, it smells like something died in your house. And my granddad goes, oh yeah, there's a dead raccoon outside. Well, what? I didn't walk up. Wait, I, I how got, did you not deal with it's, it? It's a terrible thing. Uh, but I, a terrible thing was seeing this guy Ross, who had like the most, the nicest tent, and wouldn't let me sleep in it. I had a tarp because I was told that they would supply us with tents. It was a tarp. There was no nothing on the ground. And uh, I saw him crapping on the top of a hill, and it was like a, it was like a silhouette of like Ample Entertainment of just like a guy doing that. And me and my friends made fun of him because he was a jack, a rich jackass. And then he just turned to us, and we were like, Ah, look at you! And he was like, You guys, you guys are nasty. He was like, We're not the ones taking shit on top of a hill. And that's the Review, and I lorded that over him for the rest of the time. You are thunderstruck at the sight! Thunderstruck! That's the last time. That is it. That is it. No, I'm not giving you any more. You take advantage of me because of your celebrity. You're right. I do. 
<laughs> Look, okay, I run a produce stand. Yes, I know. And I just, you know, I, I know that every time I come here is the best day of your life. And I, <laughs> and I want you to give me free apples. And that's it's the end of it. It's, it's too much. You've made a scene for all these people. Um, and I will gladly pay for my apples. Okay. Here we go. Yes, it's oh, me. Man. Here we go. Give her some apples. <laughs> Give her some apples. We have lovely apples. I know. I love your apples. I specifically come to your She loves apples. the apples. Give all her right, some. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a couple apples. All right. You are great, and sister, my dearest. <laughs> oh, thank you. Not a lot of you can afford these. That. You can. She can afford these. Can. Just so everybody knows, she can afford these apples. Hey. 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 It's not just for horses, the thing that you say. I'll bring the Range Rover around so we're done. Oh my god! Jump right in. <laughs> Good morning, guys. How you doing? You like the farmer's market? Yeah, it's like Thompson, star of Die, Die, and Die Some More. We all know him. <laughs> this is my MDB. <laughs> um, listen, this is great, huh? Okay, Dawson, you're going to bring it around. Let's get my Range Rover around. You have great tangerines as well. I'm, I'm going to make you a box. I'll you just so take much. a box. I'll give her a box. I brought that back because it's so heavy. You're going to kill a tree on top of killing my business? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with this country? Freeloaders like you. I work hard for my business. So People like I. you. Is that right? Yes. Sir, I wouldn't be in line at your stand were not for this celebrity here right now. <laughs> is that a fact? That is a true American fact. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Honey, sorry. Oh, sorry. oh my god. It's just the last time. Okay, I, 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 don't wanna, I don't want to rush you. I know you need to stand, but we do have Why don't you valet? Why don't you shut up? A charisma bomb just went off. Why don't you say your tagline from Die Die and Die Some You're dead. <laughs> but we, we have that we have that champagne lunch at the I'll Beverly the the Hills Hotel. So if you could just you. Yeah. last time, I swear that was the last time. Thank you so much. Thank you. you should walk through her wake. It smells like potpourri, but not the kind in a magazine, like real potpourri. Oh. The only thing that's dead is the dream of entrepreneurialism in this country. Because I started this. On a dime and a dream. I know. That's what you make every week. Ah, that was a good piss. Oh, hey, what's going on? What are you, what are you looking at me peeing? I'm just washing my hands, Dave. Okay. Why don't you keep your hand and your eyes off my pickle, okay? Whoa! I, I, I did not have my eyes on your pickle. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're a pickle about. peeker, okay? I don't peek at pickles. That's outrageous. Oh, you don't peek at pickles. What are you doing? I was just having a piss. David, you're in a public bathroom. Yeah! I, I, bathroom is the key word there. Bathroom. <laughs> Where people piss, not look at people's pickles. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable with how often you call your penis a pickle. But... <laughs> I'm being polite. One of us is going to be polite today, Tommy. I don't think you're being polite whatsoever. Dave Stevens is polite. All right. I, look, Tommy Prothrow is a pickle peeking jackass. <laughs> look, look, I've dripped on my pants. Well, I, I didn't have time to shake because you were eyeing me like a leg of lamb. <laughs> Dave. I, I don't know what's going on at home, what, what set off this chain of events. I came in here, I used the bathroom, I washed my hands like a normal human. You did your earthly business over there, and I didn't come between you and your, your moment. Now, whatever runoff you have is your issue. Maybe go see your urologist, or, or I don't give it a or a pickle. I'm just dripping. Good Lord, Jesus Christ. What? What kind of man are you? Now don't you give me this. What kind of man am I? You're the pickle peeker. I'm neither. None of these things. You're all of these things. These things mean one thing. I was in here first. <laughs> you were in here first. What do you think? This is some elaborate ruse where I planted this out that I've been, I've been staking you out? I don't want to go where I'm about to go, but when they hired you, I was like, you know, he's weak. He's weak sauce. He's going to bring down this division. Yeah, you. <laughs> I'm looking at you, weak sauce. Very weak way of carrying on an argument. I'm just yeah. saying. I mean, I like the neighborhood, but it's, it's not really a house. It's like it's, it's like draped palm fronds, and, and there's a.
work over there. <laughs> You're saying you don't like my work? Uh, it's not that I don't like it. I, I just... Um... It's not so much a house as it is a sheltering concept. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for a place to raise my children. Um, I need actual walls and a, and a roof. So if you have actually built right. an actual house... But let me ask you this. I was so excited about this neighborhood. Would you rather have a place where your children are physically sheltered? Yes, that. Or emotionally sheltered? <laughs> uh, uh, um, the first. Really? I mean, it's a hard decision. I, it seems like I made that decision quickly, but yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> it's... Where are you from? Uh, San Diego. Oh, hmm. Uh, yes, uh, I have many other properties to show you. Okay. Some of them are more conceptual than others. Okay. In fact, I have this other one uh -huh. that is just a description. Uh -huh. I'll tell you right now. Okay. You walk in, uh -huh. you have a feeling of sense of purpose. Oh, it inside smells the smells of huckleberry. Oh. And then you take a left, uh -huh. and there's a sauna. The sauna uh -oh. is a deconstructed sauna, <laughs> simply a hot cup of water. And oh, a packet see? of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I am a huge you know huge fan of, of your work, your paintings. I've seen at your sister's house. She's a good friend of mine, so I you know I thought I'd found a great hookup. You mentioned great neighborhoods, but this is not this is not what I'm looking for. These are more sculptures. This is the art. But I'm I need a house. If you weren't a proper lady, I would slap the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you call me sculptures? Sculpture is one of the bastard arts, okay? I went to Parsons School designed for architecture. <laughs> I read that in your bio. That's right. And so I am an architecturalist. Okay. Is that a word? It is very much a word. Okay. That's how language works. Uh -huh. If you say a word, it becomes a word. <laughs> I'm not sure you're right about that, but you're the artist. Mm. I trust you. I'm I so I'm going to punch you in the baby maker if wow. you call me an artist. Wow. I swear to God, an artist? Why don't you just call me a generalist? Why don't you just call me a human being? That means <laughs> nothing. I just, Sister. I just think this is really a brilliant manipulation of negative space. I'm, whether you're an artist or not, that's what it Say turns again. out to be. It's a brilliant manipulation of negative space. So, so you like it? Yes, I'm not going to buy it to live in with my children. That's all right. It probably wouldn't be good for children anyway. Mm -hmm. What with all the glass shards? Oh, I had noticed those. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for coming out for first annual Starbats uh, convention. As we all know, Starbats is a short-lived animated series. Aired from 1981. 1981. <laughs> the last full year. Uh, we're all we're all fans of the Starbats, uh, and we have some of the, the 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 people behind the bats live among the stars here today. So we are here for. Short Q and A. Uh, I did first uh, open the mic up to the voice of Rar himself. <laughs> Here he is, JC Chotan. <laughs> How are you, everybody? Uh, now, before you ask, legally I can't do the voice. Oh my God! Do the voice. You know, look, <laughs> If you just came to hear me do the voice, I can't do it. Oh, he's such a tease. No, I'm, I'm serious. If, if, if I do it, the lawyers standing in the back, they'll charge me $20,000. Oh, we tied him up. It's a rights issue thing. When I we tied him up in the bathroom. So I'm, gonna, I, I'm willing to talk about anything, as long as it's not just a kind of a backdoor way for me to do the voice. Just do the goddamn voice. <laughs> oh, I got a question right here. First off, can we get a question, JC? I'm not going to do the voice. I'm not, not going to do the voice, okay? We can talk about anything. We can talk about Franklin's shitty attitude. He was a pain in the ass to work with, and he's been a pain in the ass ever since, and then right, Franklin. That's true. I'm irascible. <laughs> he's a functional alcoholic is what he is. It's true. It's true. Any other questions? Yes, question. 
uh, regarding Franklin's bad attitude. Yes. If you were to improve it, would you do the voice? I'm not going to do the voice. Oh, I can't do the voice. But if he promises to stop drinking, will you do the voice? Like I said, if he promises, that's never going to happen. If he promises to stop drinking, I will. I will. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do the voice? I'm not gonna do the voice, voice. Jesus! I, I just, we've never really got to this point before. If he really stopped drinking? Well, Mr. Jim Bean went dry, so I'm on a 15 minute sober streak. Do the voice. Do the voice. Just do the voice. Come on. Do the voice. I've been in plenty other projects. Do the voice. I'm an actor. Come on. But when it's tidings this bleak, I felt a face-to-face -face was needed. We're going to need, the bank is repossessing your stand. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. You're in arrears on your micro-mortgage. And we've had to take your, your eight-square-foot <laughs> plot from you from the farmer's market. It pains me to do this, but you signed a contract, and a contract is sacrosanct. I went to the farmer's market, and I was so hungry for apples and citrus, and, and he wasn't there. He wasn't the there? He wasn't there. Oh, gosh darn, why wasn't he there? That is so... That is I mean, think so how I feel. I knew this day would come. I knew the moment that I stepped into Tinseltown with my stand, and I would just be... And shat upon and puked upon like so many other stars along Hollywood. Hollywood Florida. machine just chews up the fruit industry. So <laughs> champagne, collateral damage. Champagne, really. vintage 1960. I feel like I've been shat upon. Oh, so <laughs> it's the worst day of my life. I love those apples. No, I know. The whole reason Toluca Lake is in an orange orchard anymore is because of Orson Welles. You come from a long line of, of tragic Hollywood fruit tragedies. <laughs> I got you this rare orchid. I've been meaning to keep it to, to give it to you for your birthday. I'm just gonna give it to you now. It cost me twenty grand. It's just beautiful, but I can't eat it. <laughs> it's a flower. You just enjoy it. They shouldn't say that places like this were built on the shoulders of giants. It's more like they were tread upon by the on the backs of little farmers like me. Normal sized men. Even. Normal sized yes. men. <laughs> Tiny. I've never been good with metaphors. No. So just... Those apples just had a crispy crunch that was so perfect. They'd never been refrigerated. Worth never all had the money in the world. Apple. I know. I never paid for one. <laughs> the system, really. The system is to blame. And the system's got to stop. We have a Golden Globes party to get ready for. Oh, you're right. How am I gonna explain my face to them? Listen, Clay, that's just crazy. No, no, no. It's the safest thing I've ever come up with. I can't no. be a part of a party to this. It's the greatest plan that I've ever set with these lips of mine. <laughs> Those ears of yours are hurt. I'm just gonna walk in there and say, I'm hurting. It's been a bad day. I've lost everything. Things are so tough for us right now. They are. <laughs> done with this space. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's like I don't know where to go to the bathroom. <laughs> There's so many choices and none of them are good. Uh, I'm looking at you like you're a human toilet. Maybe I am. <laughs> this is why I love you. This is why I love your work as a being in the cosmos. Oh, thank you. Oh. I've been dealing with idiots all day. Oh, tell me about it. Variety called up, asking to know about this movie and that. Are you going to do Star Bats, the reboot? You know what? I don't know. 
It's up to me, not them, not the little folks. Right. <sighs> now, if you excuse me, I'm going to sit in the chair that I designed and stare at the wall. I would ask you to tell me what you see, but I know that you are the most beguiling of beings. <laughs> and the answer would not suffice. Mm. So I'm going to ask you what you don't see. Oh, you know what I don't see? Anyone besides you who gets me? Mm. You know? I mean, you spend four years in school, two years at an internship. I get it. Another three years at grad school. Mm -hmm. Five years writing grants, getting grants from the National Endowment of the Arts. Oh, no, you're so bored. Two years in D.C. <laughs> what was that? What was that? It's raining. Oh, gross, it's raining. <laughs> It's like, we are the toys. <laughs> the rain itself. Michael, what is so many strands. It's okay, I don't know. I don't know. I feel so many different things right now. And I love every one of them. No, I don't. I'm getting wet. This is shitty. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes roofs aren't the most important. Yeah, no, we definitely need roofs. Well, we do without the ground. That's the thing in which we stand No, apart. no, no. Like, okay, all right. Like, let's take it back to basics. Our house needs a roof! Oh, does it? Does it? Yeah, no, it kind of really does. This is not good. Oh. I do know some good realtors. Really? Yes. Because I'm looking for something with two, uh, two bedrooms and uh, central air. Okay. Um, you don't even know what houses have, do you? <laughs> so, <it's good>. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real go-getter. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. you meeting me in my office. Please take oh, a seat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for inviting me in. <laughs> you got it. A lot of people around here are saying things. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of buzz in the office. I like that part. His yeah. flies is wide open and like kind of partly down. <laughs> They're saying certain things, and all I want to say to you is. If you do indeed like peeking at pickles, well, um, <laughs> there might be a place for you in upper management. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I, um, no, 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 I get it. Use the memo pad, write it down, I'll burn it after. If you don't want to say what you think and feel and desire, just put it in the No, 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 freeze! <laughs> this man has an internal crisis, let's hear what it is. <laughs> Okay, yes, I like to look. <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's something I just do for me. It's kind of like makes me feel powerful. But I can't share it with him because then it's gone. The thing that I love to do is gone. Now it's out in the open. It's exchanged. It, it loses its currency. What do we do? <laughs> look like you're lost in thought. No, I, uh, I just like to do a cost-benefit analysis on the fly. Well, let me tell um, you a story of the, the first time that I peaked. What, what, sir, it looks. <laughs> 1975, Vietnam. <laughs> they say Charlie's coming over the ridge tomorrow morning. I hear they're going to be sending us back home soon. Oh my God! <laughs> what are you looking at? The most beautiful thing in the world. My belly tattoo? It's go further south. And my belt buckle from the state of Texas? Oh no, we're talking near the Galapagos. Oh, that <laughs> scar I had from that doctor in Cambodia. <laughs> then and only then, it was like staring at a hardened apple core. <laughs> on the end of a steep knife. Knife. Cutting up in the air. Sure. The end of it was the apple. Right. Yeah. Stabbing it. But the cool. It was like a metaphor for war itself. Right. It's the only thing that never made sense in my life. <laughs> well, sir, in wartime, men have to do what they have to do to get. God damn it! Corporations are wartime! Business is wartime! And I thought you understood. I thought that you knew how to look at the truth and say, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks everyone for coming out to Thunder Con. Convention for everyone who loves thunder and various weather patterns that cause thunder. 
Um, our uh, first speaker is someone who, believe it or not, was afraid of thunder as a child, <gasps> but overcame it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Mandrake himself. So I'm not doing the voice. Scare me anymore? Did you not hear what she said? All right. Yes, I was afraid of thunder. Kid, I said that doesn't work. That's why I spent all my time in my room doing voices. Voices, the voice, the voice. Not gonna do the voice. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Good question. Yes. What do you think that if storms had the ability to speak, what would they sound like? Good question. Look, great question. <laughs> but in the, uh, in the quotes yeah. of the sound, <laughs> I'm a classically trained actor. I've done many things in my life. I uh, I served in Vietnam. I uh, you wrote for Stars and Stripes. <laughs> it still counts. <laughs> what is man should not be judged by the good what? stuff he did? <laughs> the awesome thing he did? The one thing that he did. The best thing he did? The best thing he did. <laughs> thing he did. <laughs> you know what the best thing that I did was? The voice. Not the voice. <laughs> <laughs> My little boy. My little boy. What's he sound like? <laughs> 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 <laughs>